Hi there, how's it going? Are you good? Great, glad to hear it. So recently I've been asked, as well as in the past actually, but more recently in my DMs on Instagram, how to connect a car sub to an AV receiver for use with movies. Now some people actually don't want to go out and buy something from Clips or SVS, something made for home theatres, something that will give you the options of filters and various controls etc over the subwoofer itself so you can fine tune it to the way you like it. Some people already have this sort of thing and they want to use it indoors for some reason. So just a quick rundown of what I have right here just in case you're wondering. This is an 18 inch subwoofer rated for about 3500 watts RMS, underrated, and uh, it is one of 100 that was signed by Steve Mead. And here we have a DDM4A car amplifier. This puts out roughly at 14.4 volts, mm, 6000 watts. And that is what was powering this when it was in my car. I had four of these, actually technically five because it was a smaller one in the front of the car. This takes a beating. The box itself originally was tuned to around 28 hertz. When I brought it into the house it was all right, it worked just fine with movies and stuff. But if you've been watching my videos you'll know that over time this box has undergone quite a few modifications including insulation which has really smoothened out the sound. Obviously I've lowered the tuning on it so right now this box is tuned to around 18, 19 hertz, something like that. And it gets low. The only thing is, with this being in my house, I don't use these. So it's just a sub itself being powered by another amplifier. So this right here is the amplifier I use. It's a butt kicker BKA 1000N. Works great, has always been working great. It's actually made for the LFE shakers which you can buy. And those are designed to shake your sofa or whatever it is you might be sat on. Puts out about 2000 watts at two ohms. Right now it's wired up at one ohm to that. I don't need to put this very high, so uh, yeah. These controls right here, I don't have to worry about them because I have processing going on, but we'll get to that maybe in another video. So I use this because it keeps things tidy. There's not a lot of wiring that needs to go around. The controls are right there and I can switch it on and off and it's straightforward, simple. And that is the reason I use this instead of my car ramp. Also, there's no fans on it or anything like that. So you don't get none of that noise when you're watching movies. The car ramp I have has a fan on it. Whenever that turns on, you can sort of hear it. So it's not really good for watching movies, especially when there's quiet scenes or, you know, it's, it can be distracting. So yeah, there's pros and cons to using the car ramp or this. Technically for both of these devices, there's pros and cons. So the con of me using this will be, it doesn't get as loud as the car ramp. Then again, I'm indoors, like I said, so I don't need 6,000 watts. RMS. And in fact, some car amplifiers have a bit of a slope on those lower frequencies. Say for example, anything under 15 hertz might be a bit of an issue playing because those frequencies won't be as loud as anything above 15 hertz. So if you're going to use a car amp indoors for home theatre purposes, well, movies have LFE tracks. LFE tracks go down to like 3 hertz, so that could be a bit of an issue. There are sort of ways around it, but it can be a little complicated. Might mention them in a future video, might not, but this has no subsonic filters on it, so it plays all the way down to 2 hertz. So if you wanted to use something indoors for home theatres, be aware of that. So the amplifiers I'm talking about usually don't say that they have a subsonic filter, even though they sort of filter out the lows. This one does. And it's fairly straightforward, but if you wanted to hook up something like this to your AV receiver, these are the inputs the output on your AV receiver will go to. And usually the output on your AV receiver would be the subwoofer output. So the only other issue you might have trying to set something like this up indoors is being able to. This on its side is the same size as my TV. So when it's upright, it kind of looks a little strange. It's like, what is that? Why is that there? Get it out. As an example of a guy's room, I have these things on the walls which help with reverberation. These are just there because they're classic. I like them. I don't really care about the sound that comes out of them. They're EQ'd and blah, blah. I literally have to move my weights out of the way. I, well, I've moved those there. 
but I have weights in this room. That there processes the sound because you need that. Anyway, anything else you want to know, let me know and I'll see what I can do. All right, so there we have the sub back in its place and here we have the processor on the top of it. So this sort of gives you the options of what a home theater sub would have. And uh, without this, the sound would probably not sound as good. I mean, no, it wouldn't sound as good. It would sound poo, pretty poo. Poo isn't pretty, but it would sound pretty poo.